Wagyu literally means Japanese cattle, but it generally refers to a type of premium beef. Wagyu beef's appearance with its intense marbling is very attractive, but the history and industry behind it is just as fascinating. Eating beef used to be illegal in Japan. Now they produce a beef that is this deliciously fatty. Strange, isn't it? In this video, we're going to look back at Wagyu beef. But first, let me talk about the Asianometry Patreon. Early access members get to see new videos and selected references for them before their release to the public. It helps support the videos and I appreciate every pledge. Thanks, and on with the show. Cattle were first brought into Japan sometime in the 2nd century, either via the Korean Peninsula or China. For a long time, Wagyu beef was definitely not a thing. All the way back in the late 16th century, the Portuguese Jesuit Joao Rodriguez noted that most Japanese, and I quote, eat only wild game at banquets and their ordinary meals, for they regard a man who slaughters an animal reared in his house as cruel and unclean. Most people ate fish or birds, the latter especially more so. However, people did hunt and eat wild boar, rabbits, and so on. But they didn't eat their cattle and detested the practice. In 1587, the warlord and future anime girl Toyotomi Hideyoshi decided to expel the Jesuits and the Christian missionaries from Japan, the first step in an eventual purge. Amongst his justifications for this purge was, first, the Portuguese involvement in the slave trade, and second, their practice of killing and eating horses and cattle. The Japanese government saw this as the first depravity towards human cannibalism. The subsequent Tokugawa governments later banned cattle slaughter and beef eating, codifying the taboo into law. This only strengthened in the 18th century. In the late 1710s, Killing a cow was a crime on par with patricide and punishable with crucifixion. So, for much of Japanese history, beef wasn't a thing. Despite this, a Japanese merchant economy built up around the cattle. This is because Wagyu were valuable property, agricultural treasures immensely valuable as animals of labor, on par with a horse. They helped draft and fertilize rice fields plus transport heavy stuff. Cattle are great. Everyone started owning cattle. Uh, correction, rich and poor farmers owned their own cattle. Poor people who could not afford to own their own cattle did not own a cattle. Rather, poorer farmers banded together with two or three families sharing the use of a single animal. Village records in the 18th century found that these farmers would trade their cattle to traveling cattle traders for a new one every two to four years. Kind of like how people today lease cars. And in fact, some farmers struck formal contracts with cattle traders to trade in any sick or infirm animals. Because farmers don't want to get stuck with a dead cow. Such a situation would be disastrous for a farmer. At the time, Japan lived under a caste system, and only the unclean, or the baraku, could handle the corpse. These outcasts received the task of handling dead cows and turning them into valuable leather, which was needed for armor. In 1869, a time when domestic beef consumption was still illegal in Japan, the British consul in Hyogo reported a robust beef industry in Kobe, then a fishing village in the Hyogo prefecture. Some 60 to 100 head of cattle a day were being slaughtered, all of which was presumably for consumption by foreigners like the British sailors in port at the time. 60 to 100 a day was probably an overestimate. However, it is nevertheless indicative of the fact that Kobe and the Kansai area to which it belonged to has been doing work in the cattle industry for a very long time. Japan's southwestern areas near Kyoto specialized in cattle, and more than a few people noticed it. Tarashima Ryoen wrote in his popular encyclopedia in the 1700s, Generally speaking, in the Kanto, there are many horses and few cattle, while in the Kansai, there are many cattle and few horses. Such a divide was confirmed in 1872, when the Meiji government did the first cattle headcount. And we can continue to map it out today, the line that separates Japan's historical cattle country from its horse country. That is why beef from places like Kobe and Matsusaka eventually became so prominent. When Japan decided it was time to start eating their cattle, this cattle handling industry transitioned over their experience. Learning about this taboo might feel a bit strange, considering the present state of beef in Japan's modern culture. But taboos change over time. I did a video a long time ago about how the British colonialists of Hong Kong only recently got the native Hong Kongers there to stop eating dogs in the 1950s. 
After the Meiji Restoration in 1868, the restored Meiji Emperor desired to build strong relations with the West. Just as importantly, he wanted the people of his country to be just as big and strong as the Westerners. Advocates for Japan's modernization saw Buddhism's refusal to eat meat as a backwards religious superstition. Beef and meat eating had Western connotations of building strength, thusly if the Japanese and their soldiers wanted the same strength, then they would have to eat meat, and beef in particular. Thusly, in the late 1871, early 1872 period, the Emperor Meiji's palace dropped the official ban so that he might be able to eat French cuisine. That year, the first Japanese-owned slaughterhouses opened their doors. Even considering the modernizing attitude of the time, this seemed to have caused some issues. One religious group apparently attacked the palace in 1872, in part due to this attitude of meat-eating. A new era in Japanese beef required an overhaul of the country's cattle breeds. Japan's first cattle, the ones imported all the way back in the 2nd century, are thought to be related to those in China. During Japan's 200-year isolation period, there eventually developed four distinct lineages, or tsuru, which literally means vine plants. These turu weren't bred for food, but instead for work, short but stout, with very strong legs. The new Meiji government decided to import live animals for breeding, with 2,600 imported by 1887, mostly from Europe. The intention being to create super cows with triple purposes, labor, milk, and meat. Crossbreeding started in mass in 1900 and was common until 1910 when it was halted when it became clear that these efforts weren't being productive. The new cattle were larger and produced more milk, but that was not what farmers cared for. Farmers want strong cattle with good stamina and a calm temper. These new cows didn't have that and their beef also sucked. In 1912, farmers restarted their breeding efforts, creating what was rebranded as improved Japanese cattle. By 1944, the industry had largely established the breeds we have today. Today, those four breeds are the Japanese Black, Japanese Brown, Japanese Shorthorn, and Japanese Polled. The Black is the most common, with 90-95% to of the population. The breed was first established in 1948 and is meek and easy to tame. The black has the famous marbling, with fat content in the ribeye area reaching 50%. For that reason, when most people talk about Wagyu, they are talking about the beef coming from this breed of cattle. There are a few strains of Japanese black, what we call Kobe beef is known as the Tajima strain. Furthermore, only animals specifically born and raised in Kobe's Hyogo prefecture can be called Kobe beef. There's even a little statue to certify. That being said, most Japanese black today are a mix of those strains. Second is the Japanese brown breed. It has an interesting red color which leads people to call it the red wagyu. The Japanese word for it literally means red cattle. It is mostly raised in Japan's south like the Kumamoto prefecture where TSMC is building a fab in alliance with Sony and others. The animal itself has a docile nature, is heat tolerant and grows quickly. The meat, however, is a bit more lean and doesn't have as much marbling, with 12% less fat in the ribeye area. Third is the Japanese shorthorn, grown mostly in Japan's north. It has been bred with the American and European shorthorns. Its meat is lean and low fat, so they are more known for their high milk production. And finally, the Japanese pole, the rarest of the four breeds. It has a darker black coat than the Japanese black and mostly hangs around a small part of the Yamaguchi prefecture. Its meat also has less marbling. The breed had a promising future back during the first national Wagyu beef competition in 1966 due to its high weight gain, but today it is rather rare. There are two other native Japanese cattle breeds living on isolated islands which avoided the cross-breeding frenzy of the 1900s due to their geological isolation. We won't go into them any further here. Starting in the 1960s, machines started taking over for plowing the fields. Wagyu production eventually lost its other purposes, and the industry reoriented itself towards meat production. And then in 1991, the Uruguay round of GATT talks liberalized Japan's agricultural markets, which included beef. This increased the amount of competition in Japan's beef markets, making it one of the world's biggest. 
Japan imports the majority of its beef today, mostly used for everyday food consumption. Most such imports come from either the United States or Australia. In 2021, UN Comtrade reported that Japan imported $1.1 billion worth of beefish things from the United States and $851 million from Australia. This competitive market forced the domestic Wagyu industry to move upstream in the market, seeking meats that can command more premium prices. Meat evaluation grades in Japan depend on two factors, yield and quality. Yield grades are a mathematical function of the ratio of meat to the dressed carcass. The quality grade takes into account meat firmness, fat color, fat luster, and marbling. Marbling refers to the amount of intramuscular fat and is theorized to have come about based on selecting Wagyu animals based on their physical endurance. The animals develop the marbled fat to have energy for sustained agricultural work like pulling plows. Studies of the Japanese black cattle have found a higher proportion of slow twitch fibers compared to other breeds. The fat is so soft because it has a high ratio of monounsaturated fatty acids or MUFA compared to saturated fatty acids. Such MUFA also have lower melting points, which contributes to how the beef sort of melts. The marbling is judged using the beef marbling standard, which in Japan goes from 1 to 12, with 1 being the lowest and 12 highest. The standard was originally based on a plastic model made in 1988, but replaced with a set of photographs in 2008. Numbers 8 to 12 are given a 5 grade. This score is combined with the standard for the other aforementioned factors to get a final quality grade. You then combine the yield and quality grades together to get your final grade. The Japanese grade looks at the meat between the 6th and 7th thoracic rib one hour after ribbing. In America, they look at the 12th to 13th rib. Over time in Japan, the percentage of intramuscular fat has gone up. Fat percentage in the highest third marbling grades went from 31.7% in the 1980s to over 40% in the 2010s. Some types today can clear over 60%. Conventional wisdom in Japan holds that the amount of marbling in a Wagyu is 60% genetics and 40% farmer effort. Today, most Wagyu beef cattle are kept in small farms. The average headcount per farm in 2014 was 44.6 between all breeds. Unusually, Japanese cattle farmers are split into two groups, calf production farmers and fattening farmers. The former breeds calves via artificial insemination and raise them for eventual auction at two tiers between two to four months and six to 12 months. The latter farmers then buy the calves and carefully fatten them with great care based on the market demand for the eventual meat. They are usually fed a high energy diet two or three times a day, the food being a mix of imported formulated feed and hay slash rice straw. As the cattle's final day approaches, the proportion of formulated feed increases to almost 85%. Growth hormones are forbidden, but farmers have been raising the amount of vitamin A levels in order to produce better marbling. The average slaughtered Wagyu is 29 months old and weighs 755 kilograms, but you can go fattening them for as long as 50 months. It is expensive work with the cost of Wagyu production taking up to 90% of the price. At final, the animal can be worth something from 800,000 to 1.4 million yen. You might have noticed the presence of Wagyu imported from places like Australia. The Japanese Wagyu Registry Association has never allowed the export of their Wagyu, but a few were smuggled out to places like Australia and the United States. One notable incident with a particular farmer saw the export of some 240 Wagyu animals. Japan ended such legal exports in 1999, but illegal smuggling and exports of Wagyu eggs or sperm has persisted. This is a crime in Japan punishable by 10 years in prison or a fine of 10 million yen. That being said, it is already out there. Australia exports more Wagyu or Wagyu hybrid beef than Japan and at much cheaper prices, though the Japanese industry will insist that it is not really Wagyu unless it's raised there. Furthermore, cattle industries in other countries have been trying to upscale their own breeds of cattle in search of similar Wagyu-ish prestige. For instance, Korean Hanwu cattle are a fast-rising competitor. They use similar techniques to the Japanese and as a result produce a beef that contains similarly high amounts of MUFA, like oleic acid, 
47.3% compared to the Wagyu's 52.9%. And recently, cattle farmers in China have also started applying similar finishing methods for their own cattle, hinting at the possibility of a future Chinese Wagyu. For all of its prestige, the Japanese Wagyu industry is aging. The number of Wagyu farms in Japan, and Korea for that matter, has been slowly declining, suffering from the same issues plaguing many other Japanese agricultural industries. This decline in supply has caused the price of calves to get increasingly high. In response, institutes are studying ways to shorten the feeding period without compromising on the meat's quality. Wagyu won't vanish thanks to growth abroad, but traditional methods might eventually go away in Japan. With the future uncertain, it is interesting to look back on the history. In about 150 years, the country turned from a place where beef consumption was entirely illegal to eating and producing some of the highest priced beef around. Another example of the wild twists and turns of Japanese history. Alright everyone, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, sign up for the newsletter, and I'll see you guys next time.